It is. Interrogation techniques. Well, you might not think they have a role in business, but according to a new book, you'd be wrong. The book's called Get the Truth. Former CIA officers teach you how to persuade anyone to tell all. And there's a title for you. And it suggests there are some clear lessons to be learned from all this. The authors, Philip Houston, Michael Floyd, and Susan Carnicero, are part of a team of former CIA operators and consultants at Q Verity, a company in North Carolina who, according to their website, provide training and consulting services in detecting deception, screening and interviewing techniques. Well, I asked Peter Romery of Q Verity what use CIA skills were in the boardroom, and I began by asking him how he applied them. I want you to start relaxing. I want you to start becoming relaxed. I want you to look at me less as the adversary and more as the person who is helping you through this difficult situation. I want you, as you're sat there, you're feeling uncomfortable, to start to become more comfortable with me. It may sound a little silly, but I, you know, I'd like for you to think of me as sort of you know, cuddly Uncle Peter uh, by the end of it, your, your, your friend who is working with you to get to the truth. Well, can I perhaps raise the question of ethics at this point? Because yes. uh, I suppose most people think of business ventures as a kind of collaboration, uh, getting mm -hmm. together perhaps to, to what's the best for everyone concerned. But what you're talking about in a way is, mm. well, is manipulation. It's perhaps slightly unethical to use underhand psychological tactics to gain business advantage. Um, you, you could say that, but I would say that it's, I, I think it's very ethical. It's a very ethical way to treat people. I think um, what we what we don't do is we don't harass, we don't harangue, we don't raise our voices, we don't yell and scream, we don't pound on the table. You don't waterboard. We don't, we, we don't waterboard. No, uh, the only the only thing I do with water is drink it. Um, and so the, instead, what we're doing is is we are uh, coming at this from uh, yes a psychological perspective. Yes, we're using the psychology, and I think anybody who is in business who is not paying attention to social psychology research is doing themselves and their constituents and their company a huge, a huge disservice. Um, and so I think what we're doing is, is far more ethical. There's no coercion with this, which means that we are far less likely uh, to get a result uh, in the interrogation context that is a, a false positive, something that's been coerced, something where people just said something to make the pain stop. Uh, in the negotiation context, you know, you have the um, analogy that is used or, or the phrase that is used. They go back to Sun Tzu, the art of war, build your opponent a golden bridge to retreat across. And we do that too. We help them to see the good side of this, to help them to essentially write their, their, their winning speech, if you will. Peter Romery there of Qverity, Q Verity, which uh, I have to say, I mean, this, it, it's slightly terrifying, isn't it, that, that this kind of psychology is being applied in, in the boardroom? I suppose so, although um, it, it, psychology has always been applied in the boardroom, right? Some people have been better at it than others. Some follow, you know, different management uh, advice and techniques. Um, this just seems like a more professional version of it. Well, they're trying to use weakness, I suppose, in a way, or trying to, as you said, make people feel comfortable, but then wanting to go with you in the same way you might make a, a suspect want to be comfortable and tell you um, all he shouldn't be telling you. I mean, does that not make you feel even slightly um, uh, unhappy? Um, well, I suppose, you know, you could argue that the person at the other end of the table needs to be, um, you know, aware of this sort of thing and uh, and can try and use similar techniques on, on the person they're negotiating with. I mean, yes. I think everyone goes into negotiations knowing that the other side's trying to gain an advantage, um, and uh, you just have to be prepared for it. Mm. Well, what, 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 do you, what do you make of this, Dave? Do you think it's, uh, I mean, well, obviously, you have the CIA as homegrown, so perhaps these uh, techniques have already got into U.S. boardrooms. <laughs> I would hate to be sitting across a negotiating table from cuddly Uncle Peter, as he put it. Um, but I think, you know, a lot, the, the techniques that you use um, when someone has backed themselves into a corner to help them out, right, y you can use those I for good or for bad. And so I think that these, these psychological ideas and the sort of the, the psychology of a negotiation or an interaction with someone, whether it's in your own company or outside of your company, I think there's a lot to, to take from that. I mean, it's obvious 
obviously packaged in a way so as to grab people's attention. I think there's there's another book by the same three authors called Spy the Lie, Former CIA Officers Teach You How to Detect Deception. So it's a very, it seems like there's a little bit of a mint to be made in this in this little sector of um, of business. Mm, yeah, well, I guess it's, it, it's, it's the uh, the idea that, that somehow you're, you're working the same way as uh, preserving the security of the United States and preserving the security of your company, which I guess is uh, is good showbiz, if nothing else. Um, he did say that they don't use waterboarding, so I suppose that is at least a, a well, slight Well, at least plus. we have that. Yes, I, just, I have to say, I, it's an interesting thing in this, Nisid, because neither you nor Dave seem particularly phased by the idea that, that people don't just talk to each other in a normal way to get a business uh, thing together. Well, they, that they actually build up these, these games almost with each other. I was reading oh, this no, book uh, oh, sorry. that uh, that it would just showed up in the office a few days ago, and it was about how when you have a very complex partnership, there is the, a, a necessity to build trust in little ways before you, anybody is really willing to take a leap. And it, it, it's sort of this same idea, but turned on its head, right? If you're going to be in an, in a potentially a good relationship with another person or a, or a business, you you know you have to lay that groundwork and that foundation. I think that's what this is about, and I don't know. It's, like I said, it's all just in how you, um, you know, what, what is your end game? Yes, and sentiment of smoke and mirrors, perhaps too. Nisid, what, you, what were you going to say then? No, I was just going to say that that um, uh, I'd be curious to know whether these techniques work across cultures, because so much of um, you know with globalization, so much of what's happening in terms of business negotiations now involves uh, you know people from different countries getting across the table from one another, um, and there are you know different cultural norms. People respond to different things. I wonder if if this works you know just in a Western context or how it work on a on a Chinese state-owned company. Well, executive. exactly. I, mean, I was going to say where you are. I mean, I, in that culture, that there's an element of not giving away any kind of indication of what you're really thinking. That's almost a, a tactic in itself, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, and that's and a perfectly fair one. I mean, if whatever works for you, um, if it, as long as it's not uh, illegal or uh, unethical, I think it's fine. To eat. So perhaps we should get Uncle, the cuddly Uncle Peter Romery, to go and, and and talk to a senior Chinese official. Now that, that would be a real test of all mm. this, wouldn't it? Um, you can't help feeling perhaps the waterboard might have to come out at some point. I, I don't know, but um, it's it's an interesting d- d- development on this. I mean, Dave, I mean, I, I think it's also true that the CIA, in fact, going back to that, did discover that a lot of what they were trying to do didn't quite work with the cultures of the people they were working on in the aftermath of, of 9-11. Well, yes, the social um, and sort of psychological skills and the match between those two things is, has not been something that the U.S. military or its intelligence operations have excelled at. No, and they're trying to learn better now, I think, is uh, the issue, but maybe some of the best people have gone off to uh, give all those skills to the world of business. But anyway, uh, let's hope it all stays perfectly civil in the board- boardroom, and I'm sure it will. It's certainly been very civil here, so my thanks to Dave and my my thanks to Nisid and my thanks to all of you for listening. And uh, back same time tomorrow with more business matters. Bye bye. <laughs>